In a small town surrounded by dense forests, locals whispered about the cursed Blackwood Trail. Legend had it that those who ventured onto the trail after sundown never returned. Despite the warnings, a group of thrill-seeking teenagers, Alex, Casey, and Jamie, decided to explore the trail one night, armed with nothing but flashlights and a camera to document their adventure. As night fell, an eerie silence enveloped the forest, and the path twisted into gnarled shapes. The deeper they went, the thicker the fog became, muffling their footsteps and distorting their sense of direction. Suddenly, Casey's flashlight flickered and died, plunging them into darkness. Panicked, they tried to backtrack, but the familiar path seemed to have vanished, replaced by an unrecognizable winding route. Whispers echoed through the trees, growing louder, as if the forest itself was alive. Alex pointed the camera in the direction of the sounds, catching fleeting glimpses of shadowy figures darting between the trees. The air grew colder, and an inexplicable feeling of dread settled over them. Jamie swore he saw a figure with glowing eyes watching them from the darkness, its gaze piercing into their souls. The group stumbled upon an abandoned cabin, its door creaking open as if inviting them in. Inside, they found remnants of what looked like rituals and symbols scratched into the walls hinting at the dark history of the trail. As they explored the eerie, dilapidated cabin, the door slammed shut, trapping them inside. Outside, the whispers turned into chants, and the shadowy figures seemed to converge on the cabin. The teenagers realized the legends were more than just tales. They were warnings. The camera captured a chilling sight of something creeping towards the cabin, its features obscured by the shadows, just as the video abruptly ended, leaving their fate unknown. The tension inside the cabin escalated as the trio scrambled to find an exit. The only light came from Alex's camera, which flickered ominously, distorting their panicked faces. Casey, the most rational of the group, suggested they search for anything that could help them understand what was happening or find a way out. As they sifted through the debris, Jamie's hand brushed against a loose floorboard, revealing a dusty, leather-bound journal beneath. The journal contained the ramblings of a man who claimed to have once lived in the cabin. He wrote of the forest's ancient curse and how the shadows came alive at night. Thirsting for the souls of the living, the man's entries grew increasingly erratic, ending with a final, desperate warning to stay away from the Blackwood Trail during the full moon, the very night the teenagers had chosen for their adventure. As they absorbed the chilling tales, a sudden thud against the cabin wall jolted them, Shadows danced across the small windows, and the chants from outside grew louder, more demanding. The atmosphere thickened with a palpable sense of impending doom. Alex, trying to capture everything on camera, inadvertently recorded a shadowy figure looming behind them in the reflection of the window. Before they could react, an inhuman screech pierced the air shaking the cabin to its core. Panicking, they barricaded the door with an old, rotten wardrobe found in a corner of the cabin, while Casey and Jamie searched for other potential exits or hiding spots. Alex reviewed the footage, hoping to find clues about their pursuers. The camera playback revealed glimpses of figures encircling the cabin. Their features blurred, but unmistakably sinister. The night outside grew chaotic, with the sounds of cracking branches, guttural howls, 
and the incessant chanting escalating. The cabin's walls seemed to pulsate with the intensity of the sounds, as if the building itself was alive and reacting to the presence of the dark entities outside. In the midst of their terror, Casey discovered a hidden trapdoor under an old rug, leading to what appeared to be a cellar or tunnel. With no other options, they decided to venture into the dark passage, hoping it would lead them to safety. As they opened the trapdoor, a rush of cold air greeted them, carrying the faint scent of decay and mold. The tunnel was pitch black, narrow, and seemed to descend into the very bowels of the earth. Descending into the tunnel, the door above them slammed shut, and the sounds from the cabin above faded into a suffocating silence. The only sound was their own breathing and the soft thud of their footsteps on the damp earth. The tunnel twisted and turned, and the deeper they went, the more they felt as though they were being watched from the shadows. Whispered voices filled the air, too low to make out, but filled with malice. They pressed on, the camera's dying light their only guide revealing ancient symbols etched into the walls of the tunnel. These symbols seemed to pulse with a life of their own, casting eerie shadows that twisted and writhed like living things. The path before them grew increasingly treacherous, with roots breaking through the earth to grasp like the fingers of a long-buried corpse. As the trio navigated the suffocating darkness of the tunnel, the air grew thick with a sense of ancient, unspoken dread. The walls seemed to close in on them, the earthy smell of decay growing stronger with each step. The faint, malicious whispers now seemed to form words, chanting in a language that twisted the mind, urging them deeper into the abyss. Suddenly, Jamie stopped dead in his tracks his eyes fixed on something in the darkness ahead. The others strained to see, and the camera's feeble light finally revealed a large, cavernous room, its walls lined with more of the eerie, pulsating symbols. In the center of the room stood a stone altar, stained with dark, dried fluid that could only be blood. The altar was surrounded by remnants of what appeared to be ritualistic ceremonies, including bones, decayed offerings, and torn, faded robes. The trio felt an invisible force pulling them towards the altar, their steps involuntary, as if the very heart of the curse beckoned them. The chanting grew louder, resonating through the cavern, now clear in its intent, a call for something unspeakable to awaken. As they approached the altar, the camera picked up the rapid movement of shadows converging on the chamber, slithering along the walls and floor like living entities. Casey, with a sudden burst of clarity, realized that the ritual site might hold the key to their escape. She urged Alex and Jamie to search for any artifacts or symbols that could break the curse, hoping to find a way to stop the nightmare they were trapped in. Their search became frantic, the urgency driven by the creeping shadows and the escalating chants. In the chaos, Jamie stumbled upon a series of small, intricately carved stones arranged in a deliberate pattern around the altar. They seemed to pulsate with a faint light, resonating with the same energy as the symbols on the walls. As he touched one of the stones, a shockwave of energy surged through the cavern, the ground trembling beneath their feet. The shadows recoiled, and for a moment, the chanting ceased 
replaced by an eerie silence. Seizing the moment, Casey deciphered the arrangement of the stones, recognizing a pattern that matched the journal's descriptions. They rearranged the stones, hoping to disrupt the ritual and break the cycle of the curse. As the final stone clicked into place, a deafening roar filled the cavern, and a blinding light erupted from the altar, casting the shadows into oblivion. The light intensified, enveloping everything in its path, and the walls of the cavern began to crumble, revealing glimpses of the forest outside, as if the tunnel was dissolving into the night. The trio shielded their eyes, the camera's footage reduced to a white blaze. As the light subsided, they found themselves standing at the edge of the forest, near the entrance to Blackwood Trail, the sun just beginning to rise on the horizon. The cabin and the tunnel were nowhere to be seen, as if swallowed by the earth. Exhausted and bewildered, they looked back at the trail, which now appeared benign in the morning light. But the relief was short-lived. As they turned to leave, a lingering sense of unease washed over them. The camera, which had been recording throughout the ordeal, now displayed an ominous message on its screen. The cycle is not broken. The air around them thickened again, and distant whispers crept back into their ears, hinting that the horror of Blackwood Trail was far from over. Their hearts pounding, the trio realized the nightmare was not yet over. Despite the daylight creeping through the trees, a suffocating darkness lingered around them, as if the forest itself was reluctant to let go. The camera, still functioning despite everything, continued to record, its lens capturing the subtle distortions in the air, the shadows that seemed to twitch and whisper with malevolent life. As they attempted to make their way out of the forest, the landscape around them began to subtly shift. Familiar landmarks seemed to twist and contort, paths looping back on themselves in impossible ways. The forest was no longer just a setting, but had become a malevolent entity, intent on trapping them within its cursed bounds. With each step, the remnants of the night's horrors clung to them like a cold mist. Casey, who had retained the journal from the cabin, flipped through its pages in a desperate search for answers. The writings spoke of a cycle, a recurring nightmare tied to the history of the town and the forest, a curse born from a tragic event long ago that left the spirits of the past restless and angry. As they delved deeper into the woods, the temperature dropped, and a thick fog began to roll in, obscuring their vision. Whispers filled the air, now clearer, taunting them with snippets of their darkest fears. The trio clung together, moving as one, their eyes darting to every movement in the mist, every shadow that seemed to stalk them from the corners of their vision. Emerging into a clearing, they encountered a dilapidated structure that appeared to be an old church. Its steeple collapsed, its windows shattered. Inside, rows of decaying pews led to an altar covered in arcane symbols, mirroring those from the cabin and tunnel. The air was thick with the scent of mold and decay, but it was the only path forward. The forest behind them now, an impenetrable wall of trees and darkness. Reluctantly, they entered the church, the door groaning shut behind them, sealing them inside. The inside was shrouded in darkness, with only the faint light from the camera 
illuminating the interior. The walls were covered in claw marks and cryptic writings. The floor littered with objects that suggested rituals of summoning and sacrifice. As they approached the altar, the ground beneath them trembled, and the sound of a deep, resonant heartbeat filled the space. The air vibrated with power, and the symbols on the altar began to glow with an unholy light. The camera captured shifting forms in the darkness, figures draped in tattered robes, their faces obscured by the shadows, gathering around them in a semicircle. Alex, Casey, and Jamie realized they were standing in the heart of the curse, the epicenter of the forest's wrath. The spectral figures began to chant in unison, their voices a harmonic convergence of anger and sorrow. The teenagers, caught in the eye of the storm, felt an overwhelming urge to flee, but found themselves rooted to the spot, as if bound by invisible chains. The chanting grew louder, more insistent, and the figures advanced towards the altar. The teenagers, now understanding that they were part of a ritual that transcended time and space, braced themselves for the unknown. The camera, the silent witness to their ordeal, flickered one last time, capturing a blinding flash of light that consumed everything. In the blinding light, the boundaries between the past and present blurred. The teenagers, caught in the heart of the ritual, experienced flashes of the town's dark history, visions of a time long ago unfolded before them. A town gripped by paranoia and fear, accusing one of their own, a woman named Elara of witchcraft. They saw her dragged through the Blackwood Forest, her pleas for mercy lost to the wind as she was bound to the very altar they had found in the church. As the light dimmed, the spectral figures around them took on more distinct forms, their features etched with sorrow and rage. These were the spirits of the townsfolk, forever reliving the night they condemned Alara. The curse, it seemed, was their eternal penance, trapping them in a cycle of reenactment, feeding on the fear of the living who dared to enter the forest. The teenagers, now deeply entwined in the fabric of the curse, felt Alara's presence among the spirits. Her eyes, filled with both sadness and fury, met theirs, conveying a silent plea. It was clear that releasing Alara from her torment was key to breaking the cycle and freeing the town and themselves from the curse. The church began to shake, stones and dust falling around them as the spectral congregation's chants reached a feverish pitch. The teenagers, understanding their role in this twisted ritual, approached the altar. Casey, with trembling hands, placed the journal on the altar, its pages fluttering open to a drawing of the stone arrangement they had encountered in the tunnel. As they replicated the stone pattern on the altar, the spirit's chants morphed into a harmonious melody, filled with a haunting sadness. The ground beneath them cracked open, revealing a glowing fissure that emitted a pure, white light. Alara's spirit, now in front of them, stepped towards the fissure, turning to give them one last look, a silent message of gratitude and farewell. But before she could enter the light and find peace, the church trembled violently, as if resisting the breaking of the curse. The walls started to crumble, forcing the teenagers to flee towards the shattered entrance. Behind them, the spirits wailed in despair, their chance for redemption seemingly slipping away. Outside, 
The forest was in turmoil, trees bending and twisting, the sky darkening with swirling clouds. The teenagers, driven by a desperate hope to end the curse, pushed through the chaos, guided by the faint glow of the fissure emanating from the church. As they neared the edge of the forest, the ground shook with increased intensity, and a deep, thunderous roar filled the air. They turned to see a massive, shadowy entity rising from the ruins of the church, its form a maelstrom of darkness and rage. It was the manifestation of the curse itself, unleashed and furious at the prospect of being broken. The entity surged towards them, a tidal wave of shadow and malice, as the teenagers crossed the threshold of the forest, stepping into the light of dawn. The boundary between the cursed land and the outside world shimmered like a thin veil. The morning sun struggling to penetrate the darkness that pursued them. As the teenagers stepped into the dawn light, the boundary between the cursed forest and the outside world became a battleground of light and shadow. The entity, a massive force of darkness, loomed at the forest's edge, its form constantly shifting and writhing, as if struggling against the daylight that weakened it. Alex, Casey, and Jamie, though exhausted, realized the significance of their location at the boundary. The sun's rays, breaking through the morning mist, seemed to hold the entity at bay, its shadows recoiling from the light. They understood then that the entity, born from darkness and fed by fear, was vulnerable to the light of day. Casey, recalling the journal's passages, shouted that they needed to confront the entity with the truth of the past, to acknowledge the wrongs done to Alara and the subsequent suffering of all. The teenagers, gathering their courage, faced the entity, shouting the truth of what they had learned and witnessed, their voices carrying over the boundary into the cursed land. As their words cut through the air, the entity trembled, its form becoming less stable, as if their acknowledgement of the past weakened it. The spirits of the townsfolk, visible at the forest's edge, began to chant in unison with the teenagers, their voices a blend of sorrow and hope. The sky lightened further as the sun rose its rays piercing the darkness that surrounded the entity. The entity, its form dissipating under the onslaught of light and truth, let out a final, ear-splitting roar of defiance before it began to unravel, the shadows dissolving into the morning air. The teenagers, witnessing the dissolution of the curse, felt a wave of energy sweep over them, a cleansing gale that cleared the remnants of darkness. The forest behind them quieted, the oppressive atmosphere lifting, revealing the true, peaceful nature of the woods under the morning sun. But their relief was tempered by the knowledge that the boundary they stood upon was still a place of power and memory. The spirits of the townsfolk, including Alara, appeared before them one last time, their expressions no longer twisted in anger and despair, but softened, hinting at release from their eternal torment. The spirits faded with the rising sun, and the teenagers knew that the cycle had been broken. The curse lifted. The forest, no longer a prison of the past, whispered with the sounds of a normal woodland at dawn, yet the air still held a faint echo of the chance, a reminder of the history that had transpired. 
As they turned to leave, Alex glanced at the camera, which had miraculously continued to record. The screen showed not just their own tired, but relieved faces, but also a translucent overlay of the spirits, standing with them at the boundary, a testament to the reality of the night's events. With the forest now silent and the entity vanquished, they began their walk back to the town, the sun climbing higher in the sky. Yet, the peace was tinged with an unspoken understanding that while this chapter of horror had ended, the story of Blackwood Trail and the town's dark past would continue to linger, a whisper in the wind, ready for the next unwitting soul to uncover. Ias, Alex, Casey, and Jamie left the boundaries of the Blackwood Forest. The tranquility of the morning sun belied the turmoil they had endured. They walked in silence, each lost in thought, grappling with the night's surreal events. The town, now in view, appeared peaceful, its inhabitants unaware of the dark forces that had lurked so close. Upon entering the town, they noticed subtle changes. Buildings and streets seemed older, as if they had stepped back in time. Or perhaps the town itself had been affected by the forest's curse. People dressed in styles slightly out of time past them, casting curious glances their way, sensing perhaps that something about the trio was amiss the teenagers decided to visit the local library, hoping to find historical records that could shed light on the events they had experienced. Inside, they found old newspapers and town records dating back centuries, including articles about the witch trials and the mysterious disappearances associated with Blackwood Forest. The librarian, an elderly woman with a knowing look, watched them closely, her eyes hinting at secrets untold. As they pored over the dusty tomes and faded papers, they pieced together the history of the town and its dark legacy. They discovered that the curse was tied not just to Alara, but to a series of tragic events that had befallen the town, each one feeding the darkness in the forest creating a cycle of suffering and retribution. Their research was interrupted by a sudden, inexplicable wind that swept through the library, sending papers flying and extinguishing the lights. In the dim light that filtered through the windows, they saw the librarian approach them, her expression grave. She spoke of an ancient prophecy, known only to a few, that foretold the coming of three strangers who would face the darkness, break the cycle, and bring about a new era for the town. The librarian, who had been the keeper of the town's secrets, revealed that their actions in the forest had started a chain of events that could not be easily halted. Outside, the sky darkened ominously. As if reflecting the librarian's words, the town seemed to hold its breath, waiting for something inevitable and transformative. The trio realized that their encounter with the entity and the breaking of the curse were only the beginning, the balance between the dark and light, the past and present had been altered, and the consequences of their actions were yet to fully unfold. Determined to understand the full extent of the prophecy and their role in it, the teenagers agreed to delve deeper into the town's mysteries. They needed to explore more than just the forest. The entire town, with its hidden history and secrets, was a part of the narrative they had become entangled in. As they left the library, the air crackled with energy tangible reminder 
of the thinning veil between worlds. The town, once familiar and mundane, now seemed to them a labyrinth of shadows and light, each street and building a piece of a larger puzzle. Their journey had taken them from mere curiosity to the heart of a centuries-old saga. With each step, they felt the weight of history and the eyes of unseen watchers upon them. The town, like the forest, held its breath, waiting for the next chapter to unfold in the tale of the three who had dared to confront the darkness of Blackwood Trail. Their next step led them to the town's oldest section, where the buildings bore the marks of centuries and the streets twisted like the roots of an ancient tree. Here, the past and present seemed to blur, with each doorway and window whispering stories of yore. The trio felt the gaze of the town's ancestors, their silent scrutiny from shadowed corners and half-open doors. They reached an old mansion at the end of a cobblestone road, its facade overgrown with ivy, its windows dark, yet seemingly watchful. Local lore spoke of it as the original home of the town's founders, and possibly the first site of contact between the settlers and the ancient forces of the Blackwood Forest. As they entered the mansion, the air grew thick, charged with the echoes of past lives. The interior was a maze of rooms and corridors, each adorned with relics and portraits of people whose eyes followed their every move. In the main hall, a grand staircase spiraled upwards, leading to a locked door adorned with symbols reminiscent of those in the forest and the church. Casey, recalling the symbols from the journal, found a way to unlock the door, revealing a hidden library filled with arcane books and manuscripts. Among these texts, they discovered a diary belonging to the mansion's original master, detailing interactions with Alara before her condemnation, revealing a complex web of friendship, betrayal, and supernatural pacts. The diary indicated a secret chamber beneath the mansion, where the town's founders had attempted to harness and control the powers of the forest for their own ends. It was this hubris, the diary suggested, that had first cursed the town and forest, binding them in a cycle of darkness and retribution. Guided by the diary, the trio found the entrance to the secret chamber hidden beneath the roots of a dead tree in the mansion's overgrown garden. Descending into the chamber, they entered a space where the air was thick with the scent of old earth and the residue of ancient magics. The chamber was a circular room, its walls inscribed with the same pulsating symbols they had seen in the forest. At its center lay a broken stone altar similar to the one in the church, surrounded by the remnants of shattered crystals and ceremonial tools. As they examined the artifacts, the atmosphere shifted, a palpable sense of dread filling the chamber. Shadows flickered at the edge of their vision, and a cold wind spiraled upwards, carrying with it the faint sounds of the past, angry shouts, pleading voices, and the sorrowful lament of the forest. The broken altar began to emanate a faint, pulsing light, reflecting the symbols on the walls. The air vibrated with energy, and the ground trembled as if responding to their presence. The teenagers realized that this chamber was the heart of the curse, the point where the town and forest's fates had been irrevocably intertwined. The shadows in the chamber coalesced into forms, reenacting the events leading to the curse. 
the townspeople's betrayal of Alara, the founder's greed for power, and the forest's vengeful response. These visions, more intense and vivid than before, seem to pull the trio deeper into the story, making them not just witnesses, but participants in the historical drama. As the reenactment reached its climax, with the spectral founders enacting a doomed ritual, the chamber's energy surged towards a critical point. The teenagers, caught in the maelstrom of past and present, stood at the precipice of a revelation that promised to reveal not only the origins of the curse, but also the means to end it permanently. The narrative of Blackwood Forest and its town was unfolding, layer by layer, revealing a tapestry of human emotion and supernatural force, with the trio now at its center, poised to either repeat history or finally amend it. As the spectral drama in the chamber reached its zenith, the teenagers, Alex, Casey, and Jamie, realized they were not just witnesses, but key players in the resolution of this centuries-old curse. The ghostly figures of the town's founders were enacting the final steps of the ritual that had first bound the darkness to Blackwood Forest. Their ethereal hands, moving through the motions of sealing their pact with the forest's ancient spirits. The chamber shook with a power that threatened to tear the very mansion apart. The air alive with the screams of the past and the howling of the wind outside. The broken altar at the center of the room pulsed with a growing light, its cracks widening as if ready to burst. Casey, holding the diary, realized that to end the curse, they needed to reverse the ritual, to unmake the pact the founders had sealed with their greed and betrayal. The diary contained the original ritual's words, and inversely, the key to its undoing. She began to recite the incantations in reverse, her voice steady amidst the chaos. Alex and Jamie joined in, their voices intertwining with Casey's creating a counter-rhythm to the spectral founder's ritual. As they spoke the ancient words backward, the light from the altar grew more intense. The shadows in the chamber recoiled, and the spectral figures of the founders writhed in agony, their centuries-old control beginning to unravel. Teenager's recitation reached a crescendo, the words of liberation echoing through the chamber as the broken altar exploded in a blinding light, sending shards of stone and waves of energy throughout the room. The light engulfed the spectral figures, dissolving their forms and silencing their cries, breaking the chains of their actions that had bound the town and forest in darkness. As the light faded, the chamber and the mansion above seemed to sigh with relief. The weight of centuries lifting, the teenagers, exhausted but unharmed, found themselves standing in a chamber now free of shadows. The symbols on the walls dimmed to mere historical records of a time long past. They ascended from the chamber, finding the mansion and garden bathed in the warm light of dawn. The oppressive atmosphere of the forest was gone, replaced by the sounds of birds and the rustle of leaves in a gentle breeze. The town beyond felt reborn, its streets and buildings brightened as if washed clean of a long-standing blight. In the days that followed, the town experienced a renaissance of sorts. The darkness that had lingered around Blackwood Forest 
receded entirely, allowing people to enter and leave without fear. Stories of the haunted trail and the cursed forest faded into legend, with the teenager's experience becoming a tale of triumph over the shadows of the past. Alex, Casey, and Jamie, now heroes of the town, decided to document their ordeal in a book, ensuring the true history of Blackwood Forest and the town's dark legacy would be remembered. They included a warning of the power of greed and fear and the importance of confronting and rectifying the mistakes of the past. The forest, once a place of fear and darkness, became a symbol of healing and renewal. Its paths walked by those who wished to remember and those who sought to forget. The mansion was restored, turned into a museum and library to house the town's history and the records of the curse, serving as a reminder of the town's journey from darkness to light. And so, the story of Blackwood Forest and its curse became a lesson for future generations, a tale of darkness faced and overcome not by force, but by understanding and courage. The cycle of fear and retribution was broken, not through denial or forgetfulness, but by confronting the truth and learning from the